Hello. I just would like to share with you a little bit about my Christian life and how, what an impact it's had on me. I've been a Christian since I met my husband way back when I was 15 years old um, and I went to confirmation classes and became confirmed and his parents were very strong Christians and I liked that. It, it, I found it really intriguing and so comforting. And I used to go to church with Richard and his parents and I liked it. I, it was a feeling of safety. But more than that, there was a community which I liked. Anyway, Richard and I carried on seeing each other as we, and we got older and went to college and then we went started work and we were still seeing each other and we, we got married after eight years. And then our, on just after our second wedding anniversary, we were blessed with our first son. Then we were lucky enough to have a little girl two years later and then another little boy and then another little boy and our family was complete. We both worked hard. We both still enjoyed a Christian life. But as the children got older and football set in and what have you with the boys and we started to drift away from the church. In the meantime, after I had my last child, things changed for me physically and I became unwell. And to cut a long story short, I had to have a huge operation and sadly that went wrong. The surgeon said to me, Carol, you'll be a new woman after this operation. And I was, but all for the wrong reasons. My life had completely changed. I carried on, but unfortunately had to go in and out of hospital and have various operations, many operations in fact. I woke up one day in a hospital after, after a nine hour operation. I was in um, the, uh, oh, what's it called? The, um, not intensive care, the high dependency unit. And I woke up in this most terrible pain. I thought this can't be right because I'd had an epidural block um, just before my um, general anaesthetic so that they said I wouldn't have any pain when I came round because I was... I had about a 12 inch cut on my tummy. Anyway, when I came round, this pain was getting worse and I had to call out to the nurse and say that this pain was getting worse. And she said, well, you've got everything, you know, that you need, you know, you've got the epidural going in. I can't give you any more uh, medication. So I tried to put it off and I prayed to God for, him to take the pain away but it just didn't go away and it got worse and worse. In the end I cried out to the nurse again and she sent for the anaesthetist and they came and checked things and said everything was in place and that um, nothing more could be given and so I got really desperate and I was crying and I was calling out to God to take the pain away. Eventually I did fall asleep for a little while. When I woke up the pain was so intense and I thought to myself, my golly, what our Lord must have gone through on that cross, the pain that he must have endured for us. And I thought, and I'm making mountains out of molehills because I, I was crying because of the pain I was in and what Jesus had gone through for us. That's what I kept thinking on and on in my head. 
and I found that quite comforting and I found it distracting. Anyway, in the morning, the surgeon came round and by that time I could hardly talk because the pain just took my breath away. And the surgeon had a look, to look at me and then he had a look at where the pipe was going into the epidural that they'd put in my back to discover that it had come out and it was leaking. And in effect, I haven't had any pain relief for the whole of the night after a nine hour operation. So all that sort of me crying, I ha wasn't making mountains out of molehills. I felt sort of relieved that I wasn't being a bit of a wuss. They connected up the, the epidural and gave me virtually an overdose of whatever they put in. And within about 20 minutes, I was smiling. I was out of pain. And I kept reflecting back to the fact that our Lord Jesus went through all that pain for us. And it blew my mind away. How anyone can suffer such pain and humiliation and the mocking that he endured. And I was so grateful to him. I was so grateful to the doctor as well, who took my pain away. Unfortunately, the person that had checked me in the night was reprimanded because he really slipped up. But I, in my heart of hearts, I forgave him because once I was out of pain, I didn't care anymore. Anyway, I started to recover from that operation. And again, once I was getting over it and I, I was moved to a main ward, and then finally I was sent home, I knew that Jesus had worked in my life again and that he had restored me and made me better. And that was such an awesome and comforting feeling to think that he had equipped the surgeons and given them the knowledge to be able to carry out the operation they had. And I was just so grateful. Well, after a few months, unfortunately, things took a little turn and back in hospital I was again. I'd caught pneumonia and unfortunately, because I caught pneumonia, that caused me to cough, which caused other problems, which made me have to have yet another operation. And it went on and on like this. And I kept thinking to myself, why is this happening to me? But I never ever thought, you know, I never really felt sorry for myself, but I, I, I did question it a little bit. But I always had faith, knowing that God would pull me through. The other thing in my life that I also suffered, and although I had the most wonderful family and the most supporting husband, I suffered with depression. Mainly because of how my life had been physically before I had my children and then afterwards. It took such a different toll. But it's made me who the person I am today. And I'd like to think that it's made me, I hope, a more compassionate person. An empathetic person, perhaps, is the word, better word for people that have suffered over the years. My children saw an awful lot of things when I was, when they were young and they have dealt with it in their way. And I think it's also made them better people. Sometimes I have days when I really am very low and in deep despair, in a deep pit. And it's dark and the sun 
can be shining, the sky can be blue, but it's dark. And some people say, have said to me, well, if you're a Christian, how can you have dark days? You know, what, why do you have depression? But depression is an illness, like other things. You just can't see it. But I know that however dark and deep I get, I know God will bring me out. And he does. Because people pray for me. I believe. And prayer power is the most wonderful thing. God can create miracles. He is a miracle worker. He, he is the most awesome being. And if you believe, you know that he will see you through and give you a sense of peace and a sense of well-being because he doesn't he cries with you if you're upset he doesn't he never gives you anything more than you can cope with and i have tried to explain all the ordeals that i have gone through over these last 28 years I, I, I have sort of likened it to a bush being pruned. And when you prune a bush or what have you, you reshape that bush. And every time I have gone through something like that, an operation, and I have had many, many, many operations. You can count them on three hands now. But every time I have been reshapen, pruned, and that makes me take a new path, gives me a new beginning and a new hope. God gives us hope. God is compassionate. God is loving. And God works miracles. We know in the Bible that he performs miracles. And he performs miracles in today's life. God works in his time. We might pray for something and it doesn't always happen straight away, but it will happen. And that's a very, very comforting thought that you know that God is with you all the time. He is your best friend. He listens to you and he answers our prayers. And I pray for each and every one of you that has taken the trouble to watch this that you will be blessed by God's love and understanding because he understands each and every one of us. And I'd just like to thank you for listening and I hope it encourages you to know that he works in our lives so generously and without any condition. His love is unconditional. And I thank God for being in my life. Amen.